your family has been here in Hong Kong since 1930s, um, over 90 years. How do you look at the business environment here in Hong Kong? Well, I think the business environment in Hong Kong changes quite rapidly. Um, if you look at when the Pearl River Delta opened, Hong Kong was th at that time a manufacturing center. And all the manufacturing bases, the factories, moved across the border and Hong Kong became the financing center and, and the uh, logistics center, trying to uh, organize all the products that were coming from just uh, over the Pearl River Delta uh, to all around the world. Hong Kong grew, its economy grew, and it just changed significantly. I think the next change that we're looking at is with the Greater Bay Area. The Greater Bay Area with 69 million people and, and 11 cities is really going to change the way Hong Kong does business. And if we can still be the brains and the finance center for the Greater Bay Area, I think it's, it's a great thing for Hong Kong and I think we'll prosper and we'll flourish even more. Did you see any changes after the national security law was enacted in 2020? Um, so in my industry, which is the hotel industry, not very much. I mean, we had the social unrest for, for uh, uh, months before the, the pandemic hit. Um, then the pandemic hit, and because Hong Kong is a is only a domestic um, uh, economy, our international borders have been closed. There have been no travelers or business people coming in and out of Hong Kong. So in my industry, actually, we haven't seen very much difference. Um, uh, we need the borders to open. We need people to go back to, to, to their regular business life, uh, to actually to get vaccinated so we can all have herd immunity and, and we can return to normal. How do you understand the changes of the electoral system in Hong Kong? Um, you're talking about Patriots governing Hong Kong. What's your take on this? What people don't know about Hong Kong when they look at this overhaul is that unlike most cities or most countries in the world, uh, our LegCo, the equivalent of, of Parliament in the UK or the equivalent of the Senate and the Congress uh, in the US, uh, has not had p different parties uh, in it with one person, for example, the chief executive, is not affiliated to a political party, which therefore means he or she uh, has no base of support at LegCo. And as a result of having that many parties in LegCo and the chief executive not having a support base, it's become a little bit uh, disheveled, should I say. So it does need an overhaul. It was malfunctioning since 1997. As you know, we've had four chief executives and all four chief, chief executives had, have had trouble during their term in office. Uh, so it's not the, the individual. It's the system, and this needs to be explained to the population at large and say this is the reason we're looking for a political overhaul. It will, it will tidy up what, uh, all the activities that were happening in LegCo. Because as I said previously, the chief executive with no support base, it becomes very difficult for he or she to govern this, this city. What's your understanding about one country, two systems? Um, so one country, two systems, I mean, take for example, a swearing an allegiance to uh, uh, Beijing. I, I, uh, to, to China, sorry. Uh, I think there's no question everybody should, right? Uh, if you are serving uh, as, a, as a politician in America, you swear allegiance to the American flag. If you do that in the UK, you swear allegiance to, to the United Kingdom. Uh, but it, the question is, what is that allegiance? It doesn't mean we cannot think the way we, uh, Hong Kongers do. We should still keep our identity.